Welcome to Probability and Statistics. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about something called the student's t distribution. And the reason why we're talking about this, um, something called the student's t distribution, is because when we want to construct a confidence um, interval where the population standard deviation is unknown, we have to use this thing called the t value. Okay? So that's the reason why. Um, uh, um, in 8.2 in this video we're going to talk about the t distribution all right the student's t distribution is actually used to calculate the margin of error for a population when the population standard deviation is unknown okay so if i do not know my population standard deviation okay we can use this thing called the student's t distribution and here are a couple of facts, okay? Here is my graph right here. Now here are a couple of facts about student's t distribution. It's bell curve shape also centered about zero, okay? There's only one perimeter for the student's t distribution, which is called a degree of freedom, okay? Degree of freedom is actually your parameter. Um, student t distribution. T distribution is different than normal distribution because you actually have more area under the tails. We actually have infinite many of the t distribution curves. Okay, so why do we have so many different curves um, that look like a normal curve? Is because the degree of freedom is different. All right, and I'll show you that just a minute what exactly I mean by that. However, though. The student t distribution will approximately be normal when the number of degree of freedom increases. The more degree of freedom I have, it becomes more and more normally distributed. So that means the area, okay? So that means the area under the curve for the student's t distribution changes as the number of degree of freedom, okay, changes. All right. In general, the value of t such that an area of alpha is referring to the right of the t value, which is denoted by t sub alpha. All right. So rather than having a z score here, I'm having a t value. Okay. So t sub alpha alpha is referring to area to the right. So by giving you the area to the right, then that means I can actually find the t value. All right. There are two ways we can go about finding the t value. One of them is by calculator, the other one is by the graph. Alright, so to find the t-value, we will go back to second distribute and choose number four called the inverse t. Remember inverse, inverse norm give me the z-score, so inverse t give me the t-value. And what I put under the inverse t is area to the left again, comma, Degree of freedom. Got to know the degree of freedom. Okay. Find type in the area to the left, then comma degree of freedom. Now, not everybody's scientific calculator has inverse t. So if you don't have an inverse t on your calculator, then we have to go to our um, formula sheets. If you will uh, flip several pages, here is the standard normal distribution, negative z score. Then you have a positive z-score. Then flip the page one more time. It's called the critical value of t. Okay, I know this is kind of hard to see um, on my screen. All right. So you got degree of freedom on the first column. All right. And the top across, I can do area in one tail or area in two tails. Okay, it depends on the problem. Um, real quick, just use this. Um, just use the first one here. If the area is two, you know, if I have a problem that says area in two tail is 0.2, that means area in one tail is 0.1. So it's the same column that I'm looking at. So just make sure we know whether we are dealing with one tail versus two tail. Okay. Alrighty. Let's try some examples here, okay? Let's try some examples. 
here's a table I can refer back to here just in a minute okay all right consider the t value such that 0 0.025 of the area under the curve is to the right of the t okay so the 0 0.05 is the area to the right of the t so which picture is to the right of the t to the right of the t uh, it gotta be what uh, this one right here okay gotta be the first picture to the right of the t Right. So step number two says consider the consider value of t such that 0 0.025 the area under the curve is to the right. All right. Well, assuming the degree of freedom is equal to 13. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. Let's think about this. Okay. Think about this. Area to the right of my t. Is equal to 0 0.025 okay now if I want to do this in the calculator I have to type in area to the left if I want to put this in the calculator I got to type in the area to the left of the T so area to the left of T got to be 1 minus 0 0.025 okay which will actually give me let me go out of here point <coughs> <coughs> nine seven five all right so what I can do in my calculator if I want to do this in calculator inverse T right and in the parenthesis, the first thing we type in is area to the left, 0.975, comma, then the degree of freedom, 13. And we type in the degree of the freedom. So second distribute, number four, inverse T, 0.975, comma, degree of freedom is 13. Close my parenthesis. My t value, two decimal place, excuse me, three decimal place, 2.160. All right, so let's go back out to the picture, okay? So this t value is 2.160. All right. Now to do this in the, in the um, table, okay? I'm doing I'm dealing with one tail dealing with one tail so area in one tail it was 0 0.025 so let's look down here in the center degree of freedom is 13 so I'll go down to 13 2.160 okay that's all I have to do now, um, here's the thing though, if I'm looking for like um, area to the left, then my t value will be a negative, okay? The table doesn't have a negative or doesn't have a negative because the, the table only shows area in one tail versus two tails. So you just know that um, when the t distribution okay become approximately normal is centered about zero so to the, to the left side of the zero we'll have a negative t value okay this is something you kind of pick up on when we learn the normal curve all right so that's how you do it in a table oh let's try it again let's try it again i think i make the selection for you <laughs> uh, of the pictures consider the t value such that the area to the left of negative t plus the area to the right of positive t is equal to point 0.2 so that means the area of both tails okay the area of both tails is point 0.2 so the area of so that means the area of um, 
look at the picture, okay? The area of the negative t value. What's the area of the negative t value? What is the area of this one? Just one of them. It got to be what? 0.1, right? Two tail is 0.2. One tail will be 0.1. To the left of it, okay, which is referring to the negative t is 0.1. So if I do my inverse t again, the reason I'm talking about area to the left is because the inverse t want me to type in area to the left first comma degree of freedom is 23 so let's punch that in the calculator first so second entry inverse t degree of freedom is 23 area to the left is 0 0.1 all right three decimal place 1.319 1.319 it doesn't um, the calculator shows negative is because why because this is what for the negative t so for the negative t is negative 1.319 for the positive t will be positive 1.319 so what is my t value just what 1.319 so that's what the answer won't in the homework. So I'm going to write negative 1.319 here. And the other one is 1.319. Okay, so what is the actual t value that we looked up from the table? 1.319. So check it out. Area of two tail is 0.2, right? Degree of freedom is 23. <coughs> Area two tail point two degree of freedom twenty three. So look at the first column. Let's go down twenty three twenty three twenty three twenty three one point three one nine. That that would be the t value. Since I have in two tails, to the left is negative. To the right side of the zero is positive. All right. Let's try another one. It's real neat. Um, consider the value of t such that the area under the curve, this whole area under the curve, between the two negative and positive t values, point zero, point nine five. All right. Assume the degree of freedom is equal to eight. Determine the t value. All right. So if the area in the middle is point nine five, what are the area of two tails? Area of two tails going to equal to one minus the area in the middle, 0.95, which will give me point oh five. All right. So when I use the inverse t, I got to type in the area to the left. Of one um, of one tail, so I'm gonna say area to the left of negative t to the left side of negative t got to be the 0 0.05 divided by two, right? Just one tail that will be 0 0.025. So that will be inverse t area to the left 0 0.025 comma degree of freedom is 8 a little bit thinking involved when I want to do the inverse T point zero two five comma 8 all right there'll be negative 2.306 So the actual answer, what is the actual t value? Got to be 2.306. Okay, this one is negative because this is one on the left. The other one is positive 2.306. So what the homework one you type in is actually the positive one. Okay, because they put in the t inside the um, absolute value. Got. It. So they just want you to type in 2.306. Now on the table. You still need to know what's the area of the two tails, because the table is always about the tails. So this 
so the area in the middle is 0.95 so the area of two tail is 0 0.05 so area of two tails 0 0.05 go down to degree of freedom 8 2.306 right here okay that's how we find the t value for the t distribution okay for the t distribution all right so we will use the t value here um, in the next lecture video how we gonna estimate the population mean when the sigma is unknown. Alright, thank you for watching. We'll pick out the next lecture.